All right, let's talk about this. Offices in the city. They're slowly seeing a return of workers. Occupancy in New York City office buildings has reached 50% for the first time since the start of the pandemic. Well, it's a move in the right direction. Is the return of office workers too slow to support jobs in the service industry? Here to talk about what this means to Manhattan is the Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. Nice to have you back Good on morning, Good morning, guys. Day. Thank you. So, uh, what does this mean for New York City? I mean, you feel it. You know on Mondays and Fridays um, the city is dead. And frankly, because things are so expensive in New York City, you can't depend on three days of good business. Well, if you go to residential areas, the restaurants are packed, right? Think about the West Village or whatever. But in Midtown, Every office building used to have a whole ecosystem of businesses around it that depended on the workers being there. And it is tough now. We have passed the 50% office occupancy threshold. So we're moving in the right direction. But work has changed. And I don't think we're ever going to go back to a five-day-a-week, inflexible, in-person schedule. That's, by the way, a good thing for all of us thinking about our work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So Midtown's going to have to adjust. Midtown's going to have to convert some of those older, vacant buildings to housing to solve another problem we have. That is a little more complicated than people might realize. It's going to require lots of work in Albany and subsidy, and it hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. But we could turn Midtown into something like what we have in the financial district, a mm -hmm. vibrant 24-hour community where you now have supermarkets downtown and the schools are overflowing. Mm -hmm. Midtown could have something like that, which would be good for businesses. Then they get evening and weekend customers. We're a long way to go on that. Um, we've got to make Midtown an attractive place for people to want to come back to work and live and more. Listen, we're all seeing... Um, lots of empty stores in yes. our neighborhood. Uh, many articles about when you see these stores go out of business or leave because of robberies in the area and stuff like that. And we have it right here. We have yeah. a big supermarket go out, mom and pop sh shops, a pharmacy. This is all within like a block and a half of Fox wow. 5. Wow. Um, they say this is not good. This is the start of urban decay. And Manhattan can't afford that right now. Well, I wouldn't say Manhattan is experiencing urban decay. I think we're booming in, in so many ways. In what way? Uh, tourism will probably hit 62 million this year. Uh, real estate prices are, are very high. Apartments are renting on average for more than 5,000 a month. There's problems there. Uh, subway ridership now more than 4 million a day on most days. And New York, New York City population may be down. Manhattan population is up. But the vacant stores are a problem. It, it like saps life from a neighborhood. It's a public safety problem. The rents have to come down. That's a huge part of it. Rents needed to come down pre-pandemic because of Amazon and all that. Yeah, we, ha we have to deal with problems like shoplifting as well. I'm confident that if we can do that and if rents come down, entrepreneurs will step in because mm -hmm. this is still an entrepreneurial city. But in the meantime, I hate walking by vacant storefronts. Mm -hmm. It kills the neighborhood vibe, and it's something that we have to fix. You said rents have to come down, yes. but uh, the Rent Guidelines Board just approved that 2 to 5% increase on one-year leases, and that still has to hurt people trying to move into the city. You're trying to attract more people back. H how, do you, how do you rectify that? Yeah, so that is for the regulated apartments yes. uh, and there's a million in the city so yeah. this is a big deal mm -hmm. and folks living in those apartments are already struggling because costs are going up for food and clothing and transportation and if you're adding a rent bill increase on top of that there are families who will lose their homes mm -hmm. there are families who will be evicted and there's a good chance that they will wind up in a homeless shelter because the market rate apartments, as I mentioned, are insanely expensive, yeah. averaging in Manhattan 5200 a month. That's a record. And that's too much. Forget about someone making minimum wage. That's too much for a bus driver or a nurse or yeah. maybe even a journalist. I don't know. And, and so Manhattan is going to lose that middle class unless we also tackle the shortage of housing and affordable housing, mm -hmm. which we're also behind on. Actually, we pull the numbers every month. In the month of May, there were zero multifamily apartment buildings approved in Manhattan. Which zero. Citywide, only six yeah. mm -hmm. for 500 units. So we've got to create more housing, too. You mentioned that if they get priced out, they can move to a homeless shelter. The yeah. thing is, there may not even be room for them at a homeless uh, shelter because right now we're housing migrants. This migrant crisis costing the city $8 million a day, according to Bloomberg. Well, that's, a, that's another massive problem you have to address. It is. 
Uh, to be clear, there, no New Yorker who needs a shelter is being turned away because of lack of capacity. There's still enough room to handle. Uh, the number of New Yorkers alone, not counting migrants in shelters, is also significant. Uh, I think it's about 50,000, which is uh, more than it was a year or two ago. But we need help from the federal government to, to support the migrants who are arriving. We need federal assistance. We need a national you got it. plan. It's just going to—it's going to last you about 52 days. It's not near enough. Uh, but I do want to be clear that I think that these arrivals are good for New York, and like every other wave of arrivals, will help us grow and become more dynamic. I'm sure you've talked to many of the families. They want to work, and we have a need for their work. So ultimately, they're going to be good to make New York City more prosperous and dynamic. But they need help in the meantime, and the federal government has to help pay for that. Can we quickly talk about uh, bicycles, e-bikes, and stuff? Because I know the city is about to start an e-bike pilot yes. program. They're allowed to go faster than cars in New York City right now. How many complaints do you get? What, what is your office getting complaints on bicycles and e-bicycles a day? I don't know how many a day, but, but yes, we hear from Manhattanites who are concerned about safety, um, both because of the fire threat. We saw a horrific fire overnight. You've been talking about it this morning. And there's a difference between low-quality batteries that catch fire and higher-quality batteries, which are safer. The city is going to prohibit the sale of the low-quality batteries starting September. But you know, as for what's happening in parks, you know, city bike docks are in parks, some of them, and about 20% of city bikes are electric assist. So we're kind of acknowledging the fact that they're in parks already. But let's be clear, the kind of mopeds that, that are very dangerous are not allowed in parks, even under this pilot. The type of moped that tragically struck the child in East Harlem a few days right. ago, That's that was illegal. That's still going to be illegal. Mm -hmm. But why can't, why can't the city license every single bicycle. First of all, the city would make money, okay? And that's what they want. Not why, practical. Why? Not practical. We, we can look at it, but not, not practical. Uh, we're not even managing licensing of cars right, right now. I mean, you have cars without license plates. What are you going to do for a 12-year-old kid? There's many things we can do to advance safety. Look, the traffic laws have to be enforced for everybody including people who are on bicycles. Right, you can't, they, some of them go faster than the cars. But that's not allowed, and that should be enforced, <laughs> including in parks. Right. Mark Levine, Manhattan Borough President, thank you so much. Uh, continued success in our great borough. Appreciate thank it. Thank you to both of you. Thank All right. you.